So in my video last week, I showed you guys my three primary reading positions and talked about how they were giving me tremendous neck pain. In the comments, I asked you for your reading positions, and I've tried them out, and I'm pleased to discover I have discovered the perfect reading position. But before I reveal that to you, I need to unload all of these boxes because they're really annoying me by sitting on the floor of my office. My parents brought me these boxes today. They contain all the books I read during my childhood and adolescence. All right, let's unload these boxes and fill these shelves. So here are all my books, and I will be filming myself arranging them on my smartphone, which I have attached via a clip mount to this armrest. The books are all arranged, they're color coordinated, it is magical! Onto the subject of this video, book three of Harry Potter, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I haven't watched the movie yet, so I suspect I'm still pronouncing that incorrectly. Many of you have been telling me in the comments that book three is your favorite book of the entire series. And perhaps because of that, I came into this book with very high expectations, and I think early on I was a little bit unfair to the book. Like I was kind of cynical, you know, about certain plot points. Like whenever Harry is racing to get away from someone or to beat Malfoy back to the castle, in the case of this book, why doesn't he just ride on his super fast broom or use some flu powder and just <clears throat> transport himself? Well, the whole basis of this book is about how hard it is to find this guy Sirius Black, and I'm like, Harry has a magical map that tells you where everyone is. Why don't you just look at that whenever Sirius Black has broken into the castle and see where he is? Now, before you get all upset in the comments about how I'm criticizing Harry Potter, just wait, I'm trying to make a real point here. About halfway through reading this book, I remembered a tweet that John Green sent a couple years ago where he said something like, Books are only generous to us if we are generous to them. So yeah, of course any book that involves magic and especially time travel is gonna have elements that you're like, oh, I don't know if that would really work in real life. Yeah, of course, because it's fantasy. It's fantasy. So if you read a book like I did, just searching for plot holes and problems, well yeah, you're probably gonna find them. But if you just relax and try to enjoy the story, then you're probably gonna enjoy the story. I certainly found that to be the case reading this book. Kind of weird since my bookshelves are black, there's actually like some books right there. Oh, you see them? Oh, now, now you can see them. But if I put my face here, Oh no, the books disappear! And now in no particular order, a few more observations I had about the book. I really like the drama between Hermione and Ron in this book because I sense that uh, we're supposed to start shipping them about now, but I think the way that her character is like so annoying, but believably annoying, but not so annoying that you're not like rooting for her still to succeed, it's just brilliant, like, Character stuff by JK Rowling. I love how Exploding Snap is referred to constantly as a game they play, but is never explained. This is the first book in the series that I've read that I feel like my parents, had they read it, would actually be really uncomfortable with it because it has fortune telling, which my parents are very, very against. However, if they had continued to read further into the book, they would find out that actually, like, none of the characters take the fortune telling teacher, I think her, I don't know how to pronounce it, Traveloni or something like that. Again, sorry, I haven't seen the movie. Like, none of the characters take her, her predictions seriously. She's like a big joke. So, again, I don't think it would have ruined my development as a human being had I read these books as a child. I think it's super impressive how J.K. Rowling makes Quidditch matches so entertaining to read. See, the thing about sports is that people actually want to watch it live. That's why ESPN can charge outrageous amounts to the cable providers to include it in your package, and people don't really like to read about sports. Side note, this is a particular reason why this book by Elma Fai coming to your bookstores in just a couple months is particularly impressive because it contains a large amount of sports, and yet they are awesome and the book's so good you should pre-order it. As an amputee who enjoys a good amputee joke every now and then, I was glad to see some J.K. Rowling amputee jokes in this book. For example, at the start of the term, Dumbledore says, Professor Kettleburn, I just realized that since Dumbledore is speaking, I should be wearing my Dumbledore clothes. Professor Kettleburn, our care of magical creatures teacher, retired at the end of last year in order to enjoy more time with his remaining limbs. Ha 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 ha, amputee humor. A-M-P-U-T-E-E. And here it is, my friends, the perfect reading position. I use my smartphone mount clipped to my nightstand, and on the other hand is my Kindle. So I can sit here, laying here, hands free, like a boss, and when I want to turn the page, boop, new page, awesome. 